So as I record this, the FAA have grounded the entire Cirrus Vision Jet fleet due to three incidents relating to angle of attack warnings. That sound a bit familiar? What I want to do in this video is really quickly just talk about what exactly has happened, who does it affect, how deadly could this actually be, and what's the future now for the Cirrus Vision Jet? Before I start, regular viewers of this channel may think, where the hell are you, Steph? Well, actually, I know I record these normally in my office, but it's the Easter long weekend, we've got family over, they're using the guest bed. But if you're new to the channel, that you probably don't care about that. Or if you are new, do make sure you click on the subscribe button as well. But anyway, you're gonna hear two acronyms that I'm gonna talk about today. SWPS, Stall Warning and Protection System, and ESP, Electronic Stability and Protection. Now ESP is part of the Perspective Plus system in the Cirrus aircraft, it's a Garmin product, and it basically helps correct the aircraft when excessive control inputs in terms of pitch, roll, and airspeed are put in by the pilot. So what exactly happened? Well, there have been three incidents recently from November 2018 to one this month in April 2019. In one of these incidents, the FAA states, while the airplane was under manual pilot control, the airplane activated several downward pitch commands coincident with stall warning, stick shaker, and several associated alerts. The pilot reported angle of attack fail and stick pusher fail CAS messages preceding the pitch command. The pilot was able to stop the automatic pitch commands by pressing and holding the autopilot disconnect button in accordance with the emergency procedure in the airplane flight manual and safely landed at his destination. And thankfully in the other two incidents as well, the same outcome happened. The pilot regained control of the aircraft and managed to successfully land it. So how bad could this be? Well, the FAA state, the SWPS and ESP may engage even when sufficient airspeed and proper angle of attack exists for normal flight. And they go on to say, failed indications or intermittent indication may result in one or more of the following. Unintended automatic flight control activations, the flight crew having difficulty controlling the aircraft, excessive nose down, and possible impact with terrain. So what's causing it? Well, Cirrus and Aerosonic, who are the manufacturers of the angle of attack sensor, basically have said that the probable cause is some manufacturing issues when the angle of attack sensors were being made. Now there's more details on those manufacturing issues that they think may have caused it in the report, which I'll link to down below, I won't go into the technicalities of that. Suffice to say that the angle of attack sensor was giving incorrect readings in these incidents, and it's believed that's what's caused the aircraft to put in its own control inputs and get the aircraft into a potentially unsafe situation. So what needs to be done? Well, basically it's two steps. The first one is pretty obvious. The FAA has required that everybody needs to replace the angle of attack sensors with new ones, and there's a new part number in the Airworthiness Directive, again, linked down below. And then secondly, the aircraft has to be flight tested by a suitably qualified professional. So should they have done it? Should the FAA have acted on this? Well, if it wasn't for the recent tragic events with the 737-8 MAX and the investigations that are looking into the MCAS system on board the 7378 MAX, would the FAA have been so heavy handed and grounded the entire Cirrus fleet? Possibly not, and especially considering Cirrus had already put out a service bulletin advising people to upgrade the angle of attack sensor anyway, and this only affects around 115 aircraft on the FAA register. However, do I think it's the right thing to have done? Should they have done this? Yes. Of course they should, because if you go back to those points that we were talking about beforehand, the fourth point is something that we don't ever want to happen. And if this would have gone on to cause incident number four, where there could potentially have been an impact with terrain, we'll all be sitting here saying, we wish the FAA would have done something sooner. Now, what are your thoughts, especially with angle of attack indicators in an aircraft? Now, I don't fly with one in the aircraft I have. I have watched, there are many channels out there that advocate the use of angle of attack indicators. You're watching a video on the Cirrus Instructor channel which I'll link to down below. It's a great video, it explains how the angle of attack indicator works very well. And look, I can potentially see the uses of it, but I don't think it's something I'd ever use. But is it something that you've used? Do you like angle of attack indicators? Are you planning to get one? Are you hesitant to get one now after some of the incidents that we've had? Just let me know your thoughts. Let's start a conversation down below. Also, if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed already and you enjoy this kind of content, then do click on the subscribe button and give us a like if you found that interesting. Thank you.